Lesson 5.2 are one-to-one -one and inverse functions. So a one-to-one -one function is a function where any two inputs in the domain correspond to two different outputs in the range. So if you have two different x values, they have to have different y values. So think about the definition of a function. Every x has only one y. Now, also every y only has one x. So we have the vertical line test to test to see if something is a function, and we have the horizontal line test to test to see if it's a one-to-one -one function. So here's an example on this graph. This would not pass the vertical line test as a function, but it would not pass the horizontal line test, so it's not a one-to-one -one function. So look at these four examples and determine whether or not they are one-to-one -one functions. So the first one is not a function because both negative 2 and positive 2 have the same output of 4, and negative 1 and positive 1 also both have the same output of 1. So one y coordinate has two different x's. Similarly, number 2 is also not a 1 to 1 function. Both 55 and 61 correspond to the same output. x squared, y equals x squared, is also not a 1 to 1 function because if we draw y equals x squared, it does not pass the horizontal line test. There are an infinite number of y coordinates that have more than one x coordinate. However, y equals x cubed is a one to one function because every input, no matter what x value I plug in, I will always get a unique output out. Inverse functions are functions that if you have f is the set of ordered pairs a, b, then the inverse of f is the set of ordered pairs b, a. So their inputs and outputs are switched to each other. If f is a one-to-one -one function and you find its inverse, then the inverse of f is also a function. The notation that we use for inverse functions is this negative one up here, but it doesn't mean f to the negative one power. It's just literally the notation that we use for the inverse of f. So it doesn't mean like flip it over or anything like that. It's just our notation. Because your inputs and outputs are switched, so are your domains and ranges. So the domain of your original function would be the range of your inverse function. The range of your original function would be the domain of your inverse function. Inverse functions undo each other. Think like x squared and the square root of x. So if you compose a function with its inverse in either direction, it'll simplify down to whatever your input is, which, if we're testing it, would just be x. So that's how we test to see if two functions are inverses. Because the x and y coordinates are switched, inverse functions are reflexive about the line y equals x. A function and its inverse are reflexive along, along the line y equals x. In order to verify that two functions are inverses, we need to find the composite both directions, f composed with f inverse of x and f inverse of x composed with f of x, and see if both of them simplify down to x. So f composed with f inverse of x, every time I saw an x in the original function f, I replaced it with the entire function x plus 1 over x minus 2. And then I made a common denominator for the 1 and the negative 1. Combine like terms in the numerators, the two denominators ended up canceling, and you end up with 3x over 3, or just x. Going the other direction, f inverse composed with f of x, every time I saw an x in the original function, the, f, the inverse function, I replaced it with the whole function 2x plus 1 over x minus 1. Again, making a common denominator here, combining like terms, denominators cancel, again you ended up with 3x over 3, which is in fact x. You do always have to test both directions because sometimes you'll get x in one direction and you won't necessarily get x in the other direction. So you do always have to do the composite both directions. So for domains and ranges, the easiest way to do this is just to find the domain of each of them. So the domain of the original function f would be x can't be 1. And the domain of the inverse function would be x can't be 2. Then, because these are inverses of each other, we know that their inputs and their outputs are switched. So the domain of the original function is the same thing as the range of the inverse function. So y cannot be 1. And the domain of the inverse function is the same as the range of the original function. So y cannot be 2. So that's the way I usually do it, is I find the two domains and then apply them to the opposite ranges. So in order to find an inverse function, if we know something is a one-to-one -one function, there's kind of three steps we take. The first thing we do is we actually switch our input and outputs. We switch our x and y. Then we solve for y, 
And then lastly, we label it as the inverse. So if we have this example f of x equals x cubed minus 1, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to switch our x and y. So we get that x is equal to y cubed minus 1. Now we're going to solve for y. So I'm going to add 1 to both sides and then take the cube root of both sides to undo the cube. So I end up with the cube root of x plus 1 is equal to y. And then we want to make sure we label this as the inverse function. So I have f inverse of x is equal to the cube root of x plus 1. So now for the domains and ranges, again, I find the domains of the original function and the inverse and then apply them to the opposite ranges. So for the original function, I have a cubic function and there are no domain issues for a cubic function. So the domain for the original is going to be all real numbers. For the inverse function, there's also no domain issues with cube root functions. So that is also all real numbers. So now I'm just going to apply the domains to the opposite ranges, which means both of these ranges are also all real numbers. Some of these that are a little bit more basic, you can also work backwards. So for example, if you have f of x, you're going to take x, and then you are going to cube it, and then you are going to subtract 1, and that is your function f of x. So if you want to work backwards to find the inverse, you do the inverse of that. You work backwards. So first thing I'm going to do to, un to undo the minus 1, I'm going to add 1, and then to undo the cubing, I'm going to cube root and then I end up with the inverse function. That really only works though if you have a more simple one of these functions. So now we have a rational function. So f of x equals 2x minus 3 over x plus 4, and we want to find the inverse of this function and find the domains and ranges of both the original function and the inverse. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to interchange my x's and y's. So I end up with x equals 2y minus 3, over y plus 4. And now I want to solve for y. So I notice I have this thing in the denominator, so I'm going to multiply both, thing, both sides by y plus 4 in order to get that out of the denominator. On the left side, I'm going to distribute my x in. On the right side, the y plus 4s cancel. So now, just like I'm solving any kind of equation, I want to get everything with a y to one side and everything without a y to the other side because I'm solving for y. So I subtracted the 2y and the 4x from both sides. I can't combine xy and negative 2y, so I just get xy minus 2y. And I can, can't combine negative 3 minus 4x, so I just get negative 4x minus 3. So now, when I'm solving an equation, normally I have one term you know, with y is equal to something else. And I would divide both sides by whatever is multiplied by y. In this case, I don't have that yet. So I notice that both of these have a y, so I'm going to factor that y out. So now I have something times y is equal to something else. And now I can divide both sides by what is being multiplied by y. And I end up with y equals negative 4x minus 3 over x minus 2. And then I'm just going to relabel this instead of calling this y. I'm going to make sure I label this as the inverse of f of x. So my inverse of f is negative 4x minus 3 over x minus 2. For the domain and ranges, I found the domain of the original function f to be x cannot be negative 4, and I found the domain of the inverse function to be x cannot be 2. So then I just applied that to the opposite ranges, and I got that the range of f is y cannot be 2, and the range of f inverse is y cannot be negative 4. So go ahead and try this last one. Find the inverse of the function f of x equals negative 3x plus 1 over x, and the domains and ranges for both f and f inverse. I interchanged every x and y, so I got x is equal to negative 3y plus 1 over y. I multiplied both sides by a negative y. I wanted to cancel off that y, and I also wanted to not have to deal with that negative in front. So I got negative xy is equal to 3x plus 1. I moved everything with a y to one side and everything without a y to the other side. I got negative 1 equals 3y plus xy. I factored out a y and divided both sides by x plus 3. So I got the inverse of f of x is negative 1 over x plus 3. So then the domain of the original function would be x cannot be 0, and the domain of the inverse function is x cannot be 3, negative 3. So then if I apply to the opposite ranges, I get that the range of the original function would be y cannot be negative 3, and the inverse 
range would be y cannot be 0. So to verify two functions are inverses, compose the functions in both directions, and they should simplify down to x. To find a function's inverse, interchange x and y, solve for y, and then label it as your inverse function.